All right, so I'm gonna put this over here. All righty, that's good. Let's go ahead and open this thing. Transformer. All right. All right. Let's plug this thing in. All right. Well, now that I got this plugged in and ready, what should I do? Ooh, I have a good idea. I should demonstrate this system on YouTube and show how it operates. That's a really good idea. I'm gonna go get the cameras rolling, let's go! Hey everybody, it's Safety Security Alert here today. And today I'm gonna be giving a demonstration of my DSC PC1515 security system. Now this is all in one little box in a kit, as you just saw. Um, I can carry this around and it's a very, very cool item. Um, that I have now. And all these devices are just put on the little board that is nicely screwed in to a nice like box. And it has its own jack for the AC plug. And the AC plug is plugged into the outlet down there. Anyways, back to here. First I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you open it. Um, first of all, what we have here is we have a DSC 8 zone LED keypad and I will put all the models of these devices on the screen. So this is a DSC 8 zone LED keypad. It's a very old style keypad. I really like it. There's some trouble so we press star 2 we can find out what they are. We have 1 and 8. If I press 1 it just shows 1 which means no battery and then 8 I'm still not quite sure what that is. Right here we have a DSC uh, hardwired motion detector which is right there. And as you can see, it keeps going on because when they're hardwired, they always come on even when it's disarmed. But they don't, and they show on the keypad, but they don't actually call them unless it's armed. But if it's a wireless one, it, it probably won't do this because it's trying to conserve energy. Right here, we have a system sensor four wire smoke detector. This is obviously hardwired because it's wired. And uh, yeah, it's hooked into the auxiliary in one of the zones. That way down here is a little switch. I actually have to be honest, I don't know quite what this is for because I actually bought this whole unit like this on eBay, the case, and a couple of the devices, and I added a little bit. And, um, you know, I had it programmed, and yeah, which I thought was pretty cool that I found it, but then I made some changes to it. Right here, I'm pretty sure this will excite a lot of you, here's a Simplex 4251-20 pull station. This is the T-bar style and it is the older simplex pull station style, which I really like these. Now this is also timed to the same zone as that, so I didn't have to do any extra programming, and it is set as fire, of course, because it's a fire alarm pull station. So I just thought it would be cool if I made this a fire and security system, because I thought it might interest a lot of you out there a little bit more, and I thought it was just cool to have. Right here we have a little wooden door that I can pull open, and it has a recessed contact, which is inside of the wood, and uh, yeah, I could turn on the I could turn on the door chime real quick by pressing chime. And now if I open it, it beeps. When I close it, it beeps again. So yep. And here is a DSC glass break detector right there, which is pretty cool. So that's basically everything there. The next things we have is actually the guts of the system, which are basically under this foam pad which is to protect it for traveling. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from here. So here's the guts of the system. Here is the DSC PC1515 alarm panel circuit board. Uh, it didn't come with the can or the case for it, but it just has the circuit board inside of here. So it's all pretty cool and there's all the wiring in here. So this is a six zone alarm panel. Only five zones are being used, or four, sorry. Um, so yep, there's everything with the wiring. 
lastly of sitting down in here um is actually not just sitting down here it's mounted to the bottom of this this is a uh, Honeywell security siren that has been rebranded by DSC. Uh, this is a mostly generic siren, which a lot of companies use for a lot of systems. ADT, DSC, Honeywell, um, you know, Demco, a lot of other companies you could think about. So the wire is separate from all the others like that, and it goes into the bell terminals. The reason being is because I like to disconnect the siren a lot when I'm not using it, and I just like to have them activate. But in this case, I want to demonstrate it for you. Then right here is the AC wire that just goes onto that, which where the jack plugs in. And then here's the battery cables. And then one more thing is in this little box here, I have, for this demonstration system, a wireless key fob. This is a DSC WS4939 wireless key fob. You have your stay button, your away button, your uh, disarm, and your panic. So I'd like to show you one more thing. Uh, that is lifting the back up, and I'll show you what I'm doing in a little bit. But if you lift it up underneath it, you have all the wiring and where it all goes to. And you have your wireless transceiver, which is for the uh, key fob. It's to receive the signal from any wireless devices. So that's underneath it. And yeah. So that's basically the, the whole entire system on here. Um, and I will probably make a couple more of this kind of thing, like buy more of those and make more. But I'll make fire alarm versions of it and some security, so there'll be a couple different ones. So what I was doing earlier is you can actually lift this part up, and I can pull it out, and then I can have it be out to here, which I think is pretty cool, and it can look like that. But in this case, I don't like to use it like that. I like to be able to see everything, so I like to leave it back here. But that's basically everything. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and start by demonstrating the panics. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in onto the DSC 8 zone LED keypad. And by the way, this is a 6 zone alarm panel, but an 8 zone LED keypad. That was mismatched, but it's still compatible with each other. So, tools lit up because the motion detector is always sensing me. But, anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to start out with the fire panic by pressing the two fires. And here we go. Three. Two, one. It's sounding a temperature. So to disarm the siren after the panic, you enter your four digit code. And the default on the system is one, two, three, four. So I have it on that just for the demo system. Um, and it's showing fire memory. And uh, yeah, if I press star three, I can see what the memory was, and it says memory fire. Now I want to pound out, and the siren did like a temporal, which is showing that it's a fire alarm. So next we're going to go ahead and do a medical panic uh, by pressing the exclamation point keys, which is the, me the medical. Press it. It won't sound an alarm, but it will just dial the paramedics. Now what we're going to do is do the police panic. It's extremely loud, <laughs> and uh, that memory will stay on for a while. So what I do to clear it is I disarm or I arm it, and then I disarm it. That's that's basically how I clear the memory. So that's basically the panics. That siren is extremely loud. I gotta say. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you every way you can arm and disarm the system. Um, so the first way is by pressing stay, pressing stay for two seconds. Basically what it does is it disarms your interior motions, but arms the perimeter. So that's what we're going to do. So that's like normally people do that at night or whatever. And that's his bypass, ready, armed, and trouble. And when, uh, once that ready light is gone, then it is fully armed. So it will not work until that ready light is off. It's, it's basically counting down. And then a door would open or whatever. Now we're going to disarm it by putting in the four digit code. And that's it. Now it's disarmed. Now I can do away. This is what you're doing when you're leaving. And these motion detectors, I believe, have pet immunity up to 85 pounds, I believe. So it's doing its countdown, and once that countdown's over, and then it senses uh, motion or a door opens. Basically, when that countdown is over, it is armed. We're not going to wait for that, so we're going to disarm. 
So there you go. Now what we can do is you can also just go to it and put in your code. By default that arms and stay as you can see, but it still does the countdown. So there you go. And then you can also do just a quick arm by pressing star zero. And that by default arms and stay as well. Go to, to disarm it. And that's basically all the way most of the ways to do it from the keypad. Now what we're gonna use is our uh, key fob or wireless key fob. And on some newer systems like the Neo, you have you can have approximate. But I don't I believe that these older systems can't take that. But anyways, here's our wireless key fob. Um, so we're going to first demonstrate how to arm it to stay. We're gonna press the stay key for two seconds until it beeps, and now it's arming to stay. And we can disarm by pressing the unlock icon, and then now it's disarmed. You can also do away like that, and then disarm from the unlock. There you go. And then the panic on this, uh, it's not programmed. You can program it so the panic works in your key file, but in this case it's not. So that's basically all the ways to arm and disarm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out some devices. So first I'm going to arm this to stay, just because then I want the motion to trick me first. And now what I'm going to do is demonstrate opening the door, as if somebody were opening the door. But normally you would open the door and wait for the entry time to expire, and then you would, you know, open the door, disarm the system, and then you're good. But if you don't disarm it within a certain amount of seconds, in this case I believe it's about 10 seconds, then the siren will go off. So I'll show you. Now it's armed because the ready light's off. Open the door. And now you would go to your keypad and put the four digit code to disarm it. But in this case, we're going to pretend that it's somebody breaking in and they don't know the code. So after a little bit, if they haven't disarmed it within a certain amount of time, the siren will go off. So now I put in the four-digit code to, to um, disarm it, and now it says memory flashing zone one. And I will also mention zone one is called front door, zone two is labeled hall motion, which is that, zone three is labeled living room glass break, and zone four is labeled hall smoke detector, which is also the, this pole station, and I also have to add that label. And I press pound to go back to normal, and yep, there you go. Now I'm going to demonstrate the motion detector for you. So most of the times when you arm it to away, and then it senses motion, it'll trip the system right away if it's armed and it senses motion into away. But in this case, this one is programmed to be a delay motion detector. So same thing, if it senses us and we don't disarm it within a certain amount of time, it will sound the siren. So let's do that. But we have to arm it to away by pressing the away key. And now we're just gonna sit really still and wait for the exit time to expire. All right, it's almost done. And now the system is fully armed. And now I'm going to go ahead and move. Here we go. And it sensed me. And then you would disarm it. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna instead pretend that we don't know the code and we're gonna wait and then the siren will go off and the police will be dispatched. But in this case, it's obviously not monitored. Okay, okay now it's disarmed. This is memory zone two, which is hall motion. Pound out. And yep, there you go for that one. Alrighty. So, now what we're going to do is demonstrate the fire devices because unfortunately I can't test this glass break detector. I hope that sometime uh, I'll just be able to smash something <laughs> or get a glass break detector tester. But in, ca in this case, I have no way of testing it quite, quite now. So, we're just going to move on to the fire devices. So, this is your system sensor smoke detector. And I'm not going to use any spray for this right now. But what I will do is push the test button with the little tool, which in this case a little screwdriver. And this is a door and window contact screwdriver. So, now we're going to push it and it will go into temporal. And even when it's disarmed, fire devices are always armed.
So we have now entered our four digit code to disarm it. It is still, however, showing fire. As you can see, the smoke detector's LED is still lit. Since this is four wire, you would have to normally go way back there and disconnect the wires and then reconnect it to, to reset the smoke detector. But in this case, obviously they don't want to have to do that. So they have a reset button. So basically it cuts the power to the smoke detector and then reapplies it. So we're going to hold it for two seconds. And now it cut the power to it, which basically reset it. And then now the power is being reapplied to it. So that's basically that, which I think is pretty cool. And now what I'm going to do is probably your guys' your guys's favorite part. I'm going to pull the Simplex 4251-20, and it should do the same thing as the smoke did. Here we go. Disarm that. And... Now I'm going to reset the pole station, but I won't have to press reset. Reason being, normally with a smoke detector, the power has to be cut or just the wires have to be disconnected. In this case, resetting the pole station acts as it being disconnected. So it resets it for you. So when I reset this, the fire went away. And also, I can pull it and then reset it and have it stop like that. So that is basically the whole demonstration, but I'm just going to show you one more thing. I'm just going to show if somebody was all, only using a key fob. So this is probably what they would do. They press the away key, and then they would leave, right? So then after they leave, they would be gone for a bit, and then they would come home and then disarm with that. Alrighty, so it's armed now, and let's just say that it gets tripped. Open this, and then they come in, and then they just press this arm, and then there it goes. So, yep, there you go, guys. Thank you, guys, all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all found it helpful. Stay tuned for some more videos coming very soon. Um, and yep, have a good one. See ya. Bye.